Hello. Um, my name is Miriam. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon from wherever you're watching me um, around the world. I'm grateful to the Lord that you've come to listen to what I have to say today. Now, from my previous video, I explained, I was, I was talking about destiny and the fact that you do not own yourself. There is a God in the spiritual world. There is a spiritual God. There is a God who is spirit, just like we are spirits because we are in his image that made you, that pre-planned your life here. And I said that our lives here are not by accident. There is divine logic and there is a divine purpose for each person's life. I am not talking about in groups. I am talking about individuals by name. Now, in the second video, I talked about uh, a spiritual experience I had in my generation in July 2020. The Lord showed me what is happening um, today with regard to destiny. God has given us all the gifts. He has provided every resource. He's given us everything that we need to carry out our God-given purpose. But we are not doing what we are supposed to do because we have not tapped into the spiritual world. We've not gotten, we have not become privy to God's divine purpose. Now, I had the privilege of getting into the heavenly archive these things i'm going to say are spiritual so don't expect me to tell you that i i went to this road and and found this no everything happens in the spirit because heaven is spiritual we are spirits so obviously whatever else i'm going to speak about in this experience is spiritual now as I mentioned earlier on, I read uh, in the book of Psalms, I read Galatians, Ephesians, Jeremiah. I was talking about, I explained, the Bible explicitly points to the fact that our lives were predestined. And David and Paul talk about a book. There is a book for each person. Each of us has a book in heaven. Obviously, when you read the Bible, there are lots of other books. Book of Life, uh, ETC. But there is a book. You, There is a book in heaven with your name on it that stipulates your life here on earth. Everything that you are meant to live, everything you are meant to be, the people you are supposed to meet, the opportunities you are supposed to utilize, everything the number of years you are supposed to live so there is a daily record of the things that you're supposed to do daily like minute by minute written in heaven by god so this is what i'm going to explain now i went to heaven and this is what i saw i, I did not go to of course it must be a very big place and uh, i've only been there a few times now, the place where I arrived, I arrived at a place that looked like a warehouse, a very big, 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 big warehouse. Now, within the big warehouse were smaller rooms. So it, the warehouse was divided into smaller rooms. Now, when I say small, they're not really small, but they are smaller than the warehouse. So I went into one of the warehouses, oh, sorry, one of the rooms. I found the door open and I entered. I just found myself there. I don't know how I left my body, but I went there. <laughs> and then, so when I, when I arrived, I, I there were three things that I observed. The first thing was, there was a very big table, very, very big table in the center of that room. And that table was made of very beautiful wood. I am not good at guessing what the wood, what the kind of wood 
was i don't know but it was very beautiful and polished and very large now on that table there were a few books a few books that were open then there were two chairs behind the table and i saw two angels seated on each was seated on a chair and they were busy they had they had pens with with them and they were busy opening some of these books and they looked like they were following up on something that was written in those books okay and then the rest of the room as i said when i say room it's not really small it is big <laughs> very big i saw millions and millions of books so basically i went into an archive kind of a library of books now these books were in shelves they're all in shelves and they were, the whole place was full of books the whole place apart from the table so there's nothing else apart from the table the angels and the books it was just a book 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 like books were everywhere so one of the th some of these are some of the things that i observed on the books one each book had a name written on it let me say this again each book had a name a person's name written on it secondly from all the books that i that i i i i, I closely examined no book each book the name you would never find two books with the same name so each name was assigned was written on one book so you'd never find james something written on more than one book so meaning that person that person's name may be james is written on just one book so the other books are talking about other people meaning each book was owned by one individual and no single individual owned more than one book i, I hope you understand what i mean then those books according to my interpretation were old when i say old it does not mean they were wasted no it means they were not written in the recent past they were not recently published they were old but in good condition that is what i mean so basically it means that someone who i did not know at the time a long time ago wrote those books sat down and planned something planned out the lives of each of these people well before these people came to exist i hope you understand what i mean now i pulled out one book from the shelf and when i looked at it it was sealed I was like oh okay i saw the name of the person it was sealed and i was wondering then it looked like whoever had written it was the last to read its contents no one else had read those contents no one had read the contents of that book between the time when it was written and the time when i when when i when i got hold of it meaning that book had never been opened the mystery the contents of the, that book were only known to the person or whoever wrote it the owner knew nothing about the contents of the book and the angels did not know the contents of the book i hope you understand so i pulled out several of them and almost all of them were actually sealed 
like locked, literally locked. So as I skip, as kept as I kept checking, I there are some books that are the extreme end. They are almost gathering dust, like they have been there for a long time, and have not been touched in a long time. So just like you'd have a, a, a bookshelf and you'd never touch those books, you never clean. Obviously, they were gathered dust. So they were, it looked like they had been there for a long time, but they had, they had never been opened. So as I was checking on those books, I had these two angels talking about a certain issue. It seemed like they were, they had either not understood something clearly or they were arguing between themselves about a certain matter. So when they saw me, they called me, they said, ah, it's good you've come, please come. Come, come and come and pass a judge me. Come and, you know, tell us your mind about this issue we are talking about. So I went over to them and they asked me a question. One of the angels asked me a question, told me, asked me, what is an encyclopedia? I've grown up with encyclopedias in the physical world. So I knew what encyclopedias are. They hold records of things or of items, details, like they would talk about a certain item. So by definition, an encyclopedia is a book or a set of books giving information on many subjects or on many aspects of one subject and typically arranged alphabetically. So basically what this meant was that the encyclopedia, the book, each book was talking about a specific person, a specific pre-planned life of a specific person on earth. So when I told him the definition, the angel said, oh, okay, now I understand better. Then he told me this. Why is it that people on earth do not do what they are supposed to do? He said, look at all those books. He pointed to the books at the, in the shelves. And he basically told me this. The owners of all these books are currently alive on earth. Let me repeat this. The owners of the books that were sealed, that had, had never been opened, were living, presently living on earth. Meaning, whatever was written about each of them was not known to them. And therefore, they could not get assistance from the spiritual world. To fulfill their God-given purpose, pre-planned purpose. And as, as, as they kept talking to me, they were very distressed. He got hold of the books. He told me, the books that were on the table, he told me, these are the only books. These are the only people in this section that are active. They are actively doing what was written about them. That is why we are here reading about what they are supposed to do and sending, taking them help in the physical world. Meaning, the moment you tap into God's given plan, the moment you tap into the blueprint of God, the moment you get to know, you understand what you are meant to do at the right time, God, in his divine grace and mercy, will send angelic forces from him to provide your need because it is not your work it is his work if i want to send you to pick something for me in a distant land i'll give you transport i'll give you money to buy whatever you need basically i'll provide for all your needs and provide insurance i hope you understand what i am saying it is the same principle god has written a plan about each of you each of us has a book there. Each of us has a God-given book. And this is limited. Me, 
the books have different pages. Actually, from what I saw, one of the books that were open before one of the angels was towards, like, it was, the angel was opening the last pages of the book. And he, this is what he said. This person has lived on earth for many years, but I've only started, I've only opened his book. This is the first time his book has been opened. And it's towards the end of his life. Meaning, all the years before have been wasted. And when these angels start opening these books, they do not open from the beginning. They start from the date when you get to know what you're supposed to do and you start doing it. That is when they start sending you assistance. I hope you understand. So they opened the date, they opened the page written about this man's life on earth. From God's plan. So they, 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 when they started opening, they did not open from the start. They started, they opened from the date on which this man started doing the will of God according to God's blueprint written in his book. I hope you understand. So they actually complained. They told me, you are keeping us idle. You are not giving us, we are not working. We are idle because you are not giving us what to do. He said, these are the only people that are active. Everyone else in the shelves. Most, many of them are, are, are almost, their lives, their time is almost up, but they've not opened, their books have not been opened. They're still sealed. And they will leave and come back to God and give an account for a life they've lived for many years without any fruit. As I speak this, I feel a great sadness in my heart because I know the consequences. Just imagine God has given you 50 years and all that has been wasted. It does not mean you actually don't work hard. No, it basically means you are not doing what you are supposed to do. God cannot reward you for what you are not supposed to do. If you do something that I'm not sent you to do, I am not obliged. It is not part of our contract to pay for a service that I've not asked for. If I ask you to clean a place X, and instead of cleaning, you go ahead and build another place, I'll not pay for that for the work of building because I never asked you to build. I asked you to clean. Simple. So it's the same principle. That is what the angels were talking about. Now, basically, this is it. Let me make a summary. You have a life that was given by God. The gifts, the abilities, even the things you can't do were determined by God. The country in which you live was determined by God. The parents you have were determined by God. He pre destined you he made things happen he prepared everything just like paul said you prepared a body for me even as the psalmist said it you prepared a body for me so your role is to get into the spiritual world ask the design engineer who knows the heart of god to get information from your book the moment you start making that prayer, your book will be opened. And when your book is opened, it means that heaven will be, your, your account will be activated. So right now, if you do not know what you're supposed to do and you're not doing it, it is frozen. Your book is frozen. Essentially, it is locked. You are out there sweating for nothing, for no reward. I hope you understand what I, I'm saying. So the moment you get into that, you tap into that mystery. The moment you start making that prayer, the moment you start pressing the heavenly button concerning your destiny, crying out to God and travailing in the spirit concerning that issue, the Holy Spirit will open, will trigger that account that has been frozen for years to be activated. And the heavens will be alerted and the angels will start 
providing. God will send provision through his angel daily. Because each day has a book. Uh, sorry, each book has a name. And each day has a page. So whatever you're supposed to do that, the angels will just go, okay, this is God's will for this person this day. So they'll go to that address where they expect you to be and they'll provide for you. That is what I am saying. The question is, are you really doing what you're supposed to do? Are you in the place where you're supposed to be? Now, do not allow people who lie to you. There is a thinking, I don't know where that came from. Many Christians think that service, serving God, ministry is the church. No and no. That is not church in its entirety. That is not service in its entirety. If you look at Israel, there were 12 tribes originally, the 12 sons of, of, of Jacob, of Israel. Now, the tribe of, the tribe of Joseph was divided into two. That is Ephraim and Manasseh. Okay? So they, they, were, they became 13 tribes. God took the tribe of Levi to himself and said, these will serve me in the temple. Now, the rest of the 12 tribes were supposed to serve outside of the temple. Now, you cannot, someone cannot, no one can convince me and tell me, oh, because I, you cannot say that if you are not in the tribe of Levi, then you do not serve. You do not. You are not a minister. No. Actually, from the vision I've told you, the previous vision, the previous revelation, I saw farmers. I saw doctors. I saw engineers. I saw businessmen and women. I saw teachers. Meaning, basically, what the Holy Spirit was communicating, as long as you live the life that has that was written about you, you go out to that field and toil and sweat. You are serving God. As long as you go out and teach, if that is what is meant, if that's what you are meant to do, that is the service. If you go to that courtroom and you, you and, and and you judge, you are maybe a magistrate or you are judge. That is what you are supposed to. Do. If that is what you are supposed to do, if you go out and do research. If you are president, a politician, or whatever it is, that is service. That is ministry. That is what God expects you to do. If you, if you are a military man, if your calling is to be in the military or police or prison, that is a ministry, a hundred percent. Look at the five ta the, the parable of the talents. The master gave them different talents. Actually, if you look carefully. At the scripture where Paul talks about the ministry, the fivefold ministry, he said that these fivefold ministries, the teachers, the prophets, the pastors, the evangelists, and the apostles, are meant to equip the body of Christ spiritually. They are meant to help us, the rest of us, and each other to know God better. They are not meant to seek God for you. They are not meant to understand to to help you. They are not. They are meant to point God to you. They are meant to seek that spiritual food and bring it to you so that you consume it and you are built in the spiritual world. I hope you understand what I mean. But Paul did not mean that that is the exhaust. He had exhausted all the ministries. There are only five ministries. No and no and no. So if you are not called to be an apostle, a prophet a teacher, an evangelist. ETC. Do not fret. Do not fret and say, oh my God. Do not freak out. That is not what God has called you to do. Simple. Remember, you are not doing your work. You are doing his work. You are his workmanship. It is him that determines who does what? So your purpose is to ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. To reveal to you what is written about you in that book. Believe you me, if you do not start doing that, 
if you leave this earth, if you leave that body without doing what you are supposed to do, you are doomed. Because God is going to ask you for an accountability. And if how, what are you going to tell him? It means that millions and probably billions of people out there that are doing things that are contrary to what the Father wants them to do, but they are not even aware. It means that lots of people that have lived on earth for years and have died physically and have gone back to the Father and they have nothing to account for. They have nothing. Their book is still sealed and it's, it has gathered dust for all the years they've been alive. I don't want you to fall victim. This is a warning to you. Whoever is watching and listening to me, this is a warning to you. Please, please, please forget everything else that you've known. First purpose in your heart to find out what you are meant to be according to God's blueprint. Because the judgment of God is going to base, is going to depend on what was written about you as an individual. So the judgment God, God will judge me differently from you because we are different people. We have been given different abilities and different gifts and give different years and we live probably in a different generation. You understand? So I am in the subsequent videos, I'm going to talk about how you can actually really get to know what you're supposed to do. And I am going to talk about what the devil can do someone's destiny and how you can rescue your destiny from the claws from the grasp of the enemy i'm going to talk about the importance of a spiritual star and how the devil can actually steal destinies he, he, because he's a thief he can steal if he if he can if he can <laughs> as i said these things are spiritual and because the spiritual and the devil is also spiritual, he can see certain things and, and attempt to steal them. So I'm going to explain how you can how you can guard yourself against this and how you can live a life that is fulfilled in the Lord. And how you can get yourself ready for that day when you stand before our Lord and give an account of your life. So probably I'll have three or four more videos to explain this thing further, to help you apply this, these principles, these revelations in your daily life. So I don't want to talk about these things and just leave them there as just revelations. No, I want them to be, I want you to be able to apply whatever I've said in your own life as a person and how to guard yourself from the attacks of the enemy and live a fulfilled life in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I wish you the best of this year. And I hope that this year will mark a new beginning in your life. Something that will make a very big difference in your life. May our Lord bless you. Bye-bye.